Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Relic Runners, the latest game from Days of Wonder and new first time designer, I believe, Matthew Dunstan. And this is a very interesting game, kind of unique the way that we as dashing archaeologist adventures run around in this jungle trying to collect treasures as fast as we can because we are the relic runners. Okay, so let's jump right into it. I'm going to be demoing a two-player game. I am the green player, Jen's the blue. Although actually, strictly speaking, Jen is supposed to be the red player and I am supposed to be the yellow player because the, the pieces coordinate with the... but I'm just not going to bother with that. I'm green, Jen's blue, that's the way we roll. And let's jump into it. Now, I am in this game going to be playing the fat jolly guy who has a special ability of getting one extra ration. He starts with four rations instead of three like everybody else because clearly he needs it. And Jen will be the sexy Laura Croft type girl, very adventurous, who has the benefit of starting with one tool. So at the beginning of the game, everybody has a tool marker, but nobody has any tools yet. But Laura here gets to start, blonde Laura Croft, I suppose, gets to start with a tool. So she could choose this one, this one, or this one. This one lets her move uh, trails around. This one lets her perform actions for free. And this one would let her get another tool box on the thing. So she could actually start tracking two tools as she kind of goes up this tech tree, or she could get two points. I think she's going to take this one, not because she wants this, but because she wants to save up to get this one, because this is a very nice benefit to be able to uh, explore a path anywhere in the map. So that was the setup. We, she starts with three, I start with four rations. She starts with one tool, I start with none, and let's go. Now at the beginning of the game, we are both here in the camp, in base camp, in the center of the map. And the map has been randomly seeded with a whole bunch of stuff. This is a two-player game, so every one of these piles has two tiles. With more players, there would be three, pile, three tiles on every one of these piles. So there's two ruins in every ruin spot. There's two temples in every temple spot. And the ruins are all the same. There's always this one-use thing. But the temples vary. They're very, very different. There are three types. There's blue ones, purple ones, and white ones or ivory ones. The blue ones, all of these, when you explore and discover them, whenever you flip them over, they are all points of varying anywhere from two to five points. So you always know if you're going for those, you're going for points. The white ones give you all kinds of special abilities. Like, oop, um, I didn't look sure what that was, but yeah, they give you like sometimes one-time uses or permanent effects if you go and explore the white ones. The purple ones, they're interesting because they're all face up. You always know what you'll get if you go to a purple one. It's so, like if you come over to this purple one and explore, you will get two more rations immediately. As an example. So the purple ones are always immediate instant effects and you know what they are before you get there. So that makes them interesting as well. And what we're going to do is every turn we get to move around the jungle and after we move wherever we end up we have the option of exploring that space but to explore costs us a ration so we only have a certain number of times we can explore a space before we have to head back to base camp to pick up some more rations okay so that's that's the high level overview let's start doing it let's start relic running okay i'll be the first player and as you can see i can go any direction six in six directions they're all good but what I think I'm going to do is, I'm going to head off in this direction. Because I want to, I want to activate this purple thing, because this one's pretty cool, and we'll see how that... And plus, I want to go along these rivers, because whenever you go along a river, you find more tools. There's tools hidden in the river. You know, every single river path has a tool next to it. So I'm going to go this way, because I want to come up here, get this, and explore, and get some rivers. That's my plan. So, I get to move. Moving is kind of interesting. Every turn... When you, first of all, you move. And you actually get to do two moves, or two types of move. One type of move is moving along an unexplored path like this. And you can do that once. So I could have moved, I could have moved all the way down here. That still counts as only one unexplored path. So you can move on an unexplored path, and you can also, if you have any, move on explored paths. And that's where these come in. These are markers to indicate paths I have previously explored. And there's a, those are pretty powerful because that means you can move really fast. So like normally, um, for my move, I could move, and that would be my whole move. But say on some previous turn, I had explored, right? I, you know, I had explored all these paths and I put these paths down. That means, remember, I get to do two types of move. I get to do an unexplored path and an explored path. So this was my unexplored path, and now boom, 
Boom! That was my explored path. So you can see, if you can start making an interesting chain of paths throughout the jungle, you can move really, really fast. So that's a big part of what we're doing is exploring so we can find all these shortcuts that let us travel around really quick. But anyway, don't have any explored paths yet, don't have any shortcuts, so I'm gonna move here. That was my move, that's all I'm moving because I don't have any mal I don't have any explored paths that let me keep going. And now, after you move, you have the option of spending one ration, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna gobble up some rations that'll give me the strength to explore these ruins. And so I've done it, and that means I've taken the ruin tile. Every ruin, and there's a bunch of them all over the board, everyone does the same thing. Exploring this ruin has allowed me to mark a path, to, to mark a trail. So I will, which means I could say I've explored this path, this path, this path, or this path, anything from where I am. And with, I'm gonna do that one. Am I, or am I gonna do this one? Do this one, it gives me a, a quick shortcut back to base camp. But I think I've got like a more longer term strategy. So I'm gonna do that one, the one that's on the river. That was my whole turn. First I moved as far as I could, and then I explored. Okay, so I'm done. Now it's Jen's turn. She's the blue player. Let's see what she's gonna do. Now, I think she's gonna go in the opposite direction. I'm, I'm heading north, she's gonna head south. Uh, I think she's gonna, she wants to set up to do a relic run between this blue and this blue. Now that's gonna take a little bit, but that's the main part of the game is getting these relics. Which means to get these relics, you have to, ex to, you have to explore until you empty out all the tiles and that makes a relic appear. And then once two relics have appeared, because you've explored a lot, say like these two blues, once two blues are on the board, or two greens or two purples or two whites, you have the opportunity to capture one of them. But that'll be a little ways off, the relic running part. We'll get to that in a minute. Or, well, it might, might happen in the extended, we'll see. But anyway, Jen is, she's setting out her early path is to try to do a relic run between these two blues. But that'll take her a little while, a bit of setup, a bit of pre-planning. But for starters, to do this, she is going to move one space, whoop, down here. And like I did, she is going to spend a ration. And you can see the rations are building back up in camp now to explore. And she's explored a ruin as well. So that means she now also gets a, to put a traveled path down. And she could put it one, two, three, four, five spaces she could put it in. She's gonna put it over here. Okay, right, okay, so that was Jen's turn. She moved and then she ex uh, explored. Every turn, you just move and then you explore, move and explore, it's always really simple. So my turn again, let's go. Here I am, I could go one, two, three, four directions. If I ever come back to the base camp, I have to stop immediately, no matter whether I could move or not any further, I have to stop, but then I get to pick up three more rations. But that's not where I'm going, because I've got a lot of rations, I'm gonna explore some more. I am going to move down this path. And now this is interesting. If I wanted to, because I have an explored path, remember I get to do two movement types every turn. I get to do an explored movement and an unexplored movement. So this, strictly speaking, counts as my explored movement. And if I wanted, I could now move again, here or here or here, for my unexplored movement, because those three paths are unexplored. So I, in, because of this, I could actually move to two spaces if I wanted. However, I don't want to. I want to just go here. So even though I could move further, I'm gonna stop here on this purple temple. But now, traveling along this river means I have found some tools of my own. So I flip this to indicate the tool is found. Now you can see it's a little empty box. And I now get to pick what tool did I find. Hmm, let's see. So I could start going up this way like Jen did to try and get more. But I think what I wanna do is I wanna stay out longer. I wanna stay out and explore as long as I can before I have to go to base camp. Basically, once you run out of rations, you pretty much, there's nothing you can do and you have to head back to base camp. I wanna last a little longer. So I'm gonna go on this path, which means this path basically, the first, this one, if I have this, with this tool, I can activate a space without having to use one of my rations. On the flip side, if I go up here, if I wait a little bit longer, I get two rations. So I'm going up here but with, the, with the intent of going up here so that ultimately I'll pick up two rations which lets me stay out farther before I have to come back to base camp. So anyway, that was my move. And remember, I could have moved farther because I did my explored path and now I could go unexplored, but I'm passing. I'm not doing my second bit of move. But now I am going to act, I'm gonna search again. I'm gonna search and I'm gonna activate this purple tile that I was interested in. Okay, now, it again, requires a ration 
to act to explore. Now, if I wanted, I could use my tool now and activate it for free, but I'm saving up so I get the double food instead double ration instead of saving. This only saves me one ration. If I make it up here, it basically gives me two. So anyway, I paid a ration, my second ration, I'm gonna activate this. This is a special power. I'm, this is the purple I'm on, and what this means is I get to activate now any space that's next to me. By exploring on this purple tile, I get to activate another place. So I could activate this, this, or this. I'm gonna activate this ruin over here. And what that means is I get to put another, uh, you know, whenever you activate a ruin, you get to put another traveled path down. I'm gonna put this traveled path down there. Okay, and let's see. And that was my turn. Yes, okay, so I moved and then I activated. And the activation was kind of special because it like did this funky chain reaction thing. Okay, Jen's turn again. Now she is gonna continue with her plan of trying to make a path between these two. She's gonna move again. Whoop. And now if she wanted, again, she could go this whole route because this is her explored path and then she could keep going with her unexplored path. But she wants to find out what's in this white temple. Because that white temple, they're all very cool powers, and this might help her with her plans. So she's, even though she could move two, she's still, she's only going to move one. Okay. And so she has done her movement. Now she's going to pay a ration, and she is going to explore this ivory temple. And let's see what she finds. Whoop! She gets the special power. When placing a pathway, place it anywhere you want. That's pretty cool. Normally, when you place a pathway, you're very limited. Normally, you can only place them next to where you are. But if Jen can hold on to this until she wants to use it, and when she places a pathway, she could put it anywhere on the board, which could be very powerful to like fill in a gap that you've had a hard time filling in. So that could be handy. She's going to hold on to this for later. So anyway, that was her whole move. She moved, uh, not as far as she could have, but she moved as far as she wanted to. And then she explored. Back to me. Back to my turn. Now, once again, I'm really not taking advantage of the fact that I'm setting up these paths that can move farther, but I'm, I'm just taking it slow and steady. So, I could now go here and then one more, because this is my, this is, I'm traveling on my travel path, and then I could go here. I mean, I could, if I want to go back to base camp and get some more rations, I could go like this on my, tr on my explored, and then like this on my unexplored, but again, I'm only going to move one, even though I could move two. And that one is gonna put me here. I'm gonna pay a ration, I'm gonna explore again. So I'm almost out of rations now. I've only got one ration left, but I've explored. And once again, I'm gonna put a path down. I'm gonna put it down here. So you can see I am starting to build a trail. And these trails, having a nice, long, uninterrupted trail is very, very powerful for relic running, which again, I'll explain later. But anyway, that was my move. I moved one and then I explored and made another path. Jen's turn. She is going to move one, and she could all, um, now that's as far as she could move. She's done her unexplored path, and now there is no explored path from here, so her move is done. However, she found a tool, okay? And so she will upgrade this, so now that means she's got this level two tool. She started with one for free, and now she's made it up here because of the tool she found. Now she is going to use her final ration. She is completely out of rations now, and she is going to explore this blue temple. Now the blue temples are always points. Could be anywhere from two to five. Let's see what she got. Very nice, four points. Jen has just scored four points. That's totally secret. Points are secret throughout the game until we reveal at the end. So I know Jen's got some points, but I don't know how many. So that was Jen's turn. She moved and explored. As you can see, very simple, very fast. Okay, my turn again. Yep, all right, here we go. I'm gonna move, and again, I could move more, but I want to explore this white temple, or do I? Maybe I don't. Hmm, let's see. Well, because here's the thing. Because I've moved across here, oh, whoops, I misread that. Yeah, 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 okay, I am gonna do a double move. I am going to move, and that was my unexplored, and then, or my, that was my explored, and now here's my unexplored. So I've moved two spaces. One on my explored path, which again, you can go as far as you want, and the other on the unexplored path. And in doing that, as you can see, I crossed the tool. So I found another tool, and I have now leveled up successfully. I'm gonna use this tool right now and get myself two more rations. This means Jen is out of rations. She's gotta go back to base camp, but I can keep exploring because I just found some more rations. Anyway, so that was my move, and I got some tools along the way, and now I'm gonna explore again Use one of the rations I just found um, with the tools, and I've explored, and that gets me put down another path. And as you can see, I am making a longer and longer unbroken path. 
Okay, so that's pretty cool. And then it's Jen's turn. Okay, now Jen cannot explore anymore. She's got to go back to base camp now. She absolutely has to. Um, but here's the tricky thing. She, if she wanted to, right now, she could go one, two, but she wouldn't be back at base camp. So it would have to take her two turns to make it all the way back. So that's like a real pain to take two turns, not getting any explorers. So she is now going to use the tool that she's been saving for a while. She's gonna use it, lets her immediately place a pathway on a trail adjacent to your location. So Jen's gonna put it right here. And so boom, just like that, Jen has now made a path. So she did that before she moved, now she's gonna do her move. Whoop. She's now, she finished her move on the explored pass, and then whoop, that was her unexplored. Remember, you get two move types, the unexplored and the explored. And so Jen, in one move, because of her tool, made it all the way back to base camp. And when you end your turn on base camp, you immediately, for free, pick up rations. So Jen is now ready to go out again. She scored some points. She has started to build a path. And anyway, okay, back to me, back to my turn. Me, I haven't scored any points, but as you can see, I'm making a go of it. I have found, I'm making a nice long path. But anyway, I can still go for a couple more turns before I have to go back to base camp. So let's see, which way do I want to go? I think I will... <laughs> yeah. I'll go here. And now that's a whole move. I can't move any further because there, there's no explored pass. Now interestingly, instead if I want to, I could go woohoo all the way back here and then move back to base camp, or I could go woohoo and then like get off and come over here. I've got a lot of flexibility now because of my big long path. I'm trying to think of what I want to do though. I think I do want to explore a bit more before I go back to base. So I'm just gonna move one space and I'm gonna spend one of my last two rations and I'm gonna get whatever this special power is. What is it? Rink. It is. When exploring a temple, select the top. Oh, normally when you explore a temple, you just have to take whatever's on the top. You know, you just have to get this. But when I explore a temple, if I don't like what's on top, I can discard this and I could take the other tile. So it gives me a little bit more flexibility. And usually better stuff is on the bottom. The weaker stuff is on the top, the better stuff is on the bottom. Not always, but as a rule of thumb. So anyway, I moved and I explored. That was my turn. Now it's Jen's turn again. She's fresh up on ration. She's gonna head on back out. Let's see, now how's she gonna do this? Yep, she is gonna move one. And now again, she could move two. Is she? Yeah, what the heck? She's gonna go one, and then, that was her unexplored path, and then boom, all the way back to this blue. So she got back to this blue, at, so she made in one move all the way down here. She's gonna use one of her new rations and explore, and she got herself three points. So Jen is sitting, I think that's at seven. Yeah, so Jen's got seven points so far that she's found. Okay, and in doing that, now that this temple is empty, it becomes a shrine where one of the very cool relics are, this, uh, what's it called, the Bird of Paradise statue, I believe. So anyway, so Jen has just found that. So that's cool. We'll have to come back to it. You definitely want to see how that's going to work. Anyway, so that was her turn. She moved and then she explored. Me, I now am going to move and I'm going to turn back around and go the way I came. Boink. And um, that end. Now again, I could move further. I could go way down my, but I'm just gonna stop right here and I'm gonna use my last ration and I'm gonna do another explore. And I've gotten the, you know, so I've finished this ruin. This ruin is empty and I get to put another road down. I believe I will put the road here. And so you can see, I have now successfully made a trail all the way because remember you can move on unexplored as well from anywhere along here back to base camp. So I can get back to base camp and I can travel really far. Also because I emptied out this ruin, I have now found a crystal skull. Woo! And these obviously, goes without saying, these are awesomely cool wicked pieces. They're just very, very neat. So are your player characters. Everything about this game just screams quality. No surprise, because it's a Days of Wonder game. Anyway, so I moved and I explored. And I am out of rations now, Jen's turn. Okay, she's gonna continue to start zipping around. She's gonna go whoop, and she could go further, but she's gonna stop here. She's gonna pay a ration, and she's gonna explore, and she has now finished this temple, or I'm sorry, not temple, ruin. And remember, when you explore one of those, you get to put a road down, or an explored path, so Jen's putting that down. And another crystal skull has been discovered in the jungle. Okay, so that was Jen's turn. Alrighty, my turn now. I am out of rations. It is time to go home and get some more rations. And rather than walk slowly all the way back, 
I'm going to take my express elevator, my, you know, my shortcut. I know some shortcuts through the, the jungle. Whoop. That was my explored path, and now whoop, that was my unexplored path. And in one move, I made it all the way back, and I got three rations. Ready to go out again in the future. Okay. Oops. Oh, by the way, I just realized I was a dummy. When I emptied out this, I created another crystal skull. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. That was dumb. Hold on. Let's come back here, right? So, it's my turn. I could, as you saw, I could just use my path and go all the way back to base camp and get more rations, but I'm going to do something else on the way. I'm going to do a relic run. I'm going to be the first player in the game to collect a relic because there are, to be able to collect a relic, there have to be multiples of the same type on the board. And you have to be able to, uh, and you have to be able to move from one to the other in a turn. Right? So basically, right now there are three crystal skulls on the board, and that means it's possible to be able to pick up two of them. And I'm going to demonstrate how. Here's the thematic way that they work. So basically, um, Jen has just uncovered this shrine with the crystal skull, and I've uncovered two of them. Now, you can't just pick up the crystal skull. You can't use your rations and interact because the crystal skull is behind some kind of ancient deadly booby trap or something like that. You know, some kind of Indiana Jones archaeology adventure trap. So you can't just interact and pick it up. But what you can do is you can disarm a trap because all of these temples are connected. Um, by you know some kind of secret trap disarmament thing. Basically what that means is if I'm over here in this crystal skull temple, I can effectively push a button that will disarm um, for the remainder of my turn all the other crystal skull traps. So now this one is available to pick up and this one is available to pick up. And they're just sitting there. They're unprotected. Anybody could pick them up. And, but to be able to do it, it has to be before the end of my turn because then the traps rearm themselves. So basically, on my turn, instead of going back to base camp like I thought I was going to, I am going to say, I'm going to go on a relic run. And so I, boop, push the button that's um, here, which means all the crystal skulls are available. They are unprotected. And I've got until the end of my turn, so that means I've got to move fast. Now, there is no way I could get to this one down here because, as you can see, it would take me one, two... It would take me at least two turns to get there because this would be one, you know, I unexplored, but then I'd stop and then on my next turn I'd be able to move again. So I cannot make it to this crystal skull because I don't have a, a, a explored path that would get me there in time. But I can, before my turn is over, I can pick up this skull. So I said, relic run, push the button, all the traps go down and whoop, I pick up this crystal skull, easy peasy. And I've just scored five points, okay. And that was the end of my turn. So relic runs are different. You don't have to do, you, you don't have to use a ration to explore because you've already explored. You've already found where the button is that turns off all the traps, so you can push the button, but then you have to be able to travel. That's why making these long routes that let you travel fast is so important. Because not only did I get my crystal skull, which is worth five points, but the I get bonus points, victory points, depending on the length of the path I traveled. It's basically double the length. I went one, two spaces, so that means I just scored four points. So really, I scored nine points just now from doing a successful relic run. Um, you know, the, the points for the thing itself and then the glamour, the prestige of being, of, you know, being the explorer who made that run through the jungle and found it before the trap snapped shut. All right, so that was my turn. I did a relic run. And now Jen, she, she's been setting up the same thing. She's been making a nice path so she'll be able to get from one blue to the other. And, but she's only, so she's still got to spend some more time exploring to reveal the other blue. So on her turn, she's just going to move one, uh, spend another ration to, and that was her last ration. She's got to go home again. Spends another ration to explore and she gets more points. Three points. Okay. So that was Jen's turn. And now it's my turn again. I'm just going to use my path to go the rest of the way back and get my three rations so I can start exploring again. And now Jen, she is going to just go one step back and she's going to get three rations. Because whenever you move into base camp, you have to stop. Even if you keep going, you have to stop and pick up rations. So now it's my turn again. And I've successfully done a relic run and Jen, on her next turn, she's going to be able, what the heck, I'll just go a little bit longer, we'll do another one. So what am I going to do now? Now here's the thing, I want to really take advantage of this long path I've made. So I want to do a long relic run. Because you can imagine they add a lot of points. You do a relic run that's like seven or eight or nine 
uh, tiles along, that's 14 or 16 or 18 points plus the relic. So that's a big deal. So if I want to think about it, like as an example, when I do this last explore here, I'll make another crystal skull. And then, or no, actually, if I could make a, if I could get a path that would allow me to go from here to here, that would be one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That'd be a four link. So if I want to try and, and I've already started to build a path that would get me between this crystal skull and this crystal skull. But here's the other thing. My first crystal skull is worth five points. Every subsequent crystal skull I get is not worth any points. I still get points for the glory of the relic run, but I don't get points for these. So strictly speaking, I don't want to get another crystal skull. I want to get something else. Like for instance, if I, oh this is an interesting one, if I clear out this purple, and which will create you know, this purple tiki mask there, and then I, I just make a little bit more exploration to um, be able to get down to this purple and clear it out, so there's a purple here and a purple here, that would be an epic run. One, two, three, four, five, six, that would be 12 points plus the five for getting my first purple. So that's a pretty cool plan. I think that is what I'm going to head out and I'm going to set out to try to do. So, now how do I do that? Well, I got to move. I want to get into position to be able to do that. So for starters, I will make a big run. One space along my unexplored and then all that way along my explored. And I end up there. Now, I can't move any farther forward because I've done my unexplored and my explored path. So I guess since I'm here, I'll take a breather and I will use a ration and I'll see what I find in this spot. Okay, and this is a, uh, see at, oh, this is bonus points. At the end of the game, I get three points for every ivory tile in front of me, including this one. So um, basically, this, is, this tile is worth three points. And if I can end the game with um, another white one, I could earn, I can end the game with six points. So I just basically got a bonus point score thing. And oops, I just realized I did something wrong. Crystal skulls don't come from the, uh, what's it's the, it's supposed to be the green frogs. So it's a green frog and a green frog, and I picked up a green frog. Sorry, that was minor mistake. Green frogs are what you find in the ruins. But now that I've cleared out this ivory, that's where a crystal skull, it doesn't really matter. All the, the, uh, the uh, treasures, the relics are worth the same points. It's just that you want to, if you can, get one of each. All right, so anyway. So that was my move. I did a crazy long move. I explored, I revealed a crystal skull, and I got a bonus point thing. Now, Jen is going to move one space, use one of her new, and explore, and she's gonna get even more points, five points. So she's just been racking up points like crazy. And she has revealed the other bird of paradise. And so next turn, she'll be able to do a relic run and, you know, and do her first one. Okay, so my turn again. I am going to move one space, and I'm gonna pay a ration to explore. And that means I get to put another road down. As you can see, I'm continuing to make my path super duper long. Okay, that was my turn. And Jen's turn. Time for her to do her relic run. She, de she declares, I'm pushing the button, whoop. And off she goes. Oh, did she already cross this line? Yes, she did. Oh, shoot. Previously when she crossed that line, I forgot. She got a tool. What tool did she get back then? Let's say that she is getting this one, the one that will let her move her paths around. Okay, so anyway, so I forgot about that in the previous turn. Sorry about that, folks. But anyway, now I am, she pushes the button. The blue um, birds of paradise are safe, except for the one she's in. Of course, she can't pick up that one. She's got to do a relic run now. And so off she goes, zoom, and she just picked up five points and one, two, three. That's five points for this and six points for her run. So, as you can see, Jen has been racking up a ton of points. She's got a lot more points than me, but I have a much longer road than her. Alrighty. And, you know, I think I'm gonna stop there. You kind of get the idea of what's going on as the game continues. You know, you get to where, I mean, I'm, a, I'm almost about to finish my road, at which point I have to start moving roads around to be able to do other runs. The game ends in a two-player game when somebody has collected seven relics, but more relics with more players. And really, the game doesn't change at all for other players other than there are, these tiles are higher. There's more tiles to find and explore but, and, you know, and collect before you can make the relics reveal. But then once the relics reveal, you start running like a crazy archaeologist just trying to find those relics before the trap snaps shut again. All right, so that's Relic Runners. That's a basic run through. If you'd like, um, you can hit the button right now for extended, and I'll play some more. Although, honestly, I think you're just going to see more of the same. 
Um, you know what? Actually, yeah. I think I've actually done a pretty good job of demonstrating everything. I think I am going to stop there. No extended playthrough for this. Instead, you can just go straight to the button for final thoughts, because I just went a little long. Alrighty. Everybody, uh, you can hit the button in five, four, three, two, one.